I've never seen the righteous forsaken or a seed begging for bread. Woo! Somebody say, I'm adopted. Say, I am part of the beloved. I am in the family. Deal with it. <laughs> Father God, we thank you for your love. We thank you for your eternal love. Everlasting love. We thank you that you are the uncreated light. You are the uncreated love. You are the uncreated spirit. And we look to you today, the author and the finisher somebody says he's the author and the finisher of my faith he didn't bring you this far to just bring you this far come on now somebody he's not setting you up for a defeat he's setting you up for a victory don't judge tomorrow by your past Yesterday is not your key ingredient for your necessarily, for your key ingredient for your tomorrow. The, you just need to trust in the Lord. Lean not on your own understanding. You need to learn how to cast your cares upon Him. We need to understand what it is to yoke up with the Savior. Come on, somebody, I'm yoking up with a Savior today. I'm, 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 I'm unyoking, I'm destroying that sucker, and I'm yoking up with my Savior. Somebody say, his yoke is easy, and his burden is light. Things you're going through should be light work. Should be light work. Say, the things I'm going through can't be compared with the glory that is about to be produced because of the things I'm going through. See, every problem, every pain, all persecution has a payday. We don't go through the things we go through just out of vain and say, oh, wow, good things happen or bad things happen to good people. And then you just say, oh, well, I guess you can't win them all. That's a lie. Catherine Kuhlman says you don't have to go down to defeat not one single day. It's how you determine your metric of your victory. What is the measurement in which you measure your victorious moments in your lifespan. Your victorious moments are not your expected outcome. That's not victory. The study, and Derek and I were talking about this on Saturday, Friday night. How that Olympic gold medalists, when they win the Olympic gold, they go, what do I do now? The goal is not the goal. Winning the prize is not necessarily the goal. It, it's, somebody say Jesus. Jesus. It's the process through life. Life is not a destiny desperately driven towards. As much as it is, the fluidity of a purpose fulfilled. Somebody say, the process of life is making me, not breaking me. Can we give God a hand clap of praise? Come on, don't patty cake my Savior. Hallelujah! Jesus, the lover of my soul. Hallelujah. I wish I had about two hours. You may be seated. I wish I had two hours so we could just go back over that song. 
of, of adopted. There's so much on that. The last two songs, there's so much anointing of the reality of the season, the moments that we're in. And can you, give, just, can you just give the, the worship team a, a thank you? Thank you, Papa. I really feel that this morning, the, the biggest thing that we can latch on to today is our first love. I, I need to fall in love with him. I keep falling in love with him over and over and over and over again. I keep falling in love with him over and over and over and over again. He gets sweeter and sweeter as the days go by. Oh, what love between my Lord and I. I keep falling in love with him over and over and over and over again. If you haven't been at Pentecost for at least 30 years, you probably don't know what in the world's going on. It's an old time. Pentecost. Oh, where's my... I don't even have, Mike, I don't have my hanky on me. It's okay, I got another one. This one was anointed down in Dallas, Texas. <laughs> Brian, I'm, I'm going to be down there at the middle. Tori and I are going down there in the middle of uh, January. We'll say hi to everybody for you. Bless you guys. Can you say, Father God? Father God. I, declare I declare Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. Lord, Lord, over my mind, over my, mind. My, will, my will, and my emotions. Father God, Father God. I, decree I decree and declare Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. Lord, Lord, over my body. My body is a temple of Holy Spirit. You know, Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 11 says that he put eternity into the hearts of men. So you have God. Everybody in here and out there has God inside. We have come out of the DNA of the love. The love. The uncreated love. Say, I am a product of love. Okay, you don't believe me. Father, God, help us this morning. We thank you for a great grace and the spirit of revelation to rest upon our minds this day. Father, we thank you for opening the gates wide. For the floodgates have been opened wide, says the Lord. The floodgates of abundance, the floodgates of hope, the floodgates of finances, the floodgates of the things that you've been looking for for your family. The floodgates of abundance have been opened up unto you. Even yesterday, says the Lord, I, I have opened them up. A fresh outpouring of my spirit is now available. Just open up your eyes and see be aware of what I'm doing in this season, for we, it will astound you, profound you, and propel you into everything that God has predetermined, predetermined, predesigned, and dreamed about before time began. Get ready, for it's going to be one heaven of a ride. Yeah. 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 Amen. Woo! Anybody believe that? Anybody want to buy into that? Yes. When we, oftentimes when people are about to preach, we say, go give them heaven. Amen. A little bit different than the world's colloquial statement. But say, Father God, Father God I, declare I declare Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit over my body. Over my, body. my body is the temple, is the temple of Holy Spirit. God abides in me. 1 Corinthians 6.17 says that he who joins himself to the Lord has become one spirit with him. Say, I am one with the spirit of the living God in whom who dwells in me. Say, my body is the temple of Holy Ghost. My body is not a sanctuary for sickness. 
Come on, can you hear me? Yes. Say, my body, my body is not, is not an, incubator an incubator for infection, for infection. or infirmity. Or infirmity. My, body my body is the healed of the Lord. The Bible says, by his stripes we are healed. That's what it says in Isaiah, but it says in 1 Peter 2, 24, it says, by his stripes we were healed. When, we, when were we healed? On the cross, crucified. Jesus died. John three sixteen. for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whomsoever would believe on him would not perish, but would have everlasting life. Somebody say everlasting life. Everlasting, everlasting life did not, is not going to start when you get to heaven. The decay of your body is not the doorway to eternity. Just looking for an amen somewhere. The decay of your body is not the doorway to eternal life. Death is not the doorway. Somebody say Jesus is. Jesus. He says, I am the, the way, the truth, and the life. No one enters unto the Father except through me. That's what Jesus said. Jesus is the one that paid. I, I, keep your focus on Jesus. Keep your, behold the lamb and you won't behold all the noise that is happening all around you. You can be walking in peace when everybody else around you may be in turmoil. Amen. Say, I, say I, am I am peace, peace. To, the to the storms. Did you hear what you said? Yes. Say, I am peace to the storm. The Prince of Peace lives in you. You become one with the Prince of Peace. So you are peace to the storm. When you step into a situation out of the obedience of the Father, when you step into that place, peace steps into that place. Joy steps into that place. Righteousness steps into that place. Faith steps into that place. Come on, Mr. Mason. Everything changes when you show up. Everything mathematically against you or your spheres of influence begins to shift and change when you show up. Everything mathematical, everything contrary, everything against, everything evil, all these things begin to shift and change. Because I want to tell you something that you need to receive today. Rules, regulations, and laws are shifted and changed on behalf of the beloved. Well, that's unfair, Barry. Well, welcome to my message on the unfair God with the unfair favor. Because he wants to give you beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, and a garment of praise for a spirit of despair. He wants to make you an oak of righteousness instead of being a flimsy snowflake in the midst of a storm. You're not going to be tossed to and fro. You're going to stand and in all things stand. You're going to stand in the storm. You're going to walk in the storm. You're going to walk on the storm. And you're going to become the storm. For the spirit of the fear of the Lord is coming out of the ecclesia, the church of the living God. Amen. And it's about to strike vengeance against everything that is contrary to the love of the Father. What does that mean? He's going to judge the judges. He's going to judge. And we're seeing judgment come to the house of the Lord like never before. Say so, David, thou son of Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. We, we have to learn how to stand. We got to learn how to kazak ourselves. We need to learn how to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. We got to learn how to rule and reign with Christ Jesus. What does that look like? It looks like dominion, but not dominion according to the world's 
definition of dominion. Can you hear the word of the Lord today? We are not dominating people. We're dominating institutions. We're dominating demonic ideologies. We're dominating atmospheres and environments that are conducive to poverty, perversion, death. Say, I'm about to rule and reign. In my sphere of influence, there is faith, hope, and love. Righteousness, peace, and joy. Grace and truth. That's the kingdom of God. Faith, hope, and love. Righteousness, peace, and joy. Grace and truth. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Daddy. Well, very honored to be with you today. It's been so nice to be able to take a few weeks off. I didn't have to introduce myself as a guest speaker this morning. It's been really good to be home with a family and just do the Christmas family thing. And it's been great. It's been great to be at home um, with Kevin and Sherry and Mark and Rhonda and Mark and Katrina and, and uh, the staff and elders and Good to see you guys on a regular basis, and I just bless you guys. Thank you for your support over this last year. We have seen so much good and goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. I, I, I want you to be encouraged today. Do not be, don't, don't be afraid today. Don't, don't be concerned about tomorrow. Say, Father, Father forgive me. For worrying. For worrying is a very bad sin. You can't worry and trust at the same time. You just can't. Take your mind off of everything you're going through. Take your mind off your past trauma. Take your mind off the things that have kept you captive. Take, take your mind off the hereditary curses. Take your mind off of those things. And with intentionality, set your mind on the things that are above. Set your mind like cement on the things that are above. The Bible says in Colossians 3, 2, set your mind. We have to set our mind. When you set something, it becomes concrete. You need to have a concrete focus on the things that are above, not on the things that you're going through. This is the temporary realm. This is the realm where things shift and change. Every molecule in this thing is moving and shifting and changing even as I, I'm using it to support things. You cannot put your support into something, your trust into something that does not have concrete principles. We must shift our gaze. We must shift our focus in this season. And we must be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Uh, this has nothing to do with my message, or, or maybe it does. Joshua chapter 1, verse 2. And just as you guys are turning here, Ian and Dana, can you stand up? <clears throat> I heard the Lord saying, you have encouraged many people over this last season. And you've been Bar a Barnabas to many families. And you are constantly in a place of encouragement. And the Lord says to you, he who encourages will soon be encouraged. And there, there's about to be some good news that shows up on your doorstep in the next three days. Look for the goodness of the Lord. There's going to be a good report. There's going to be something that comes. I, I want you to look with expectation. I want you to, I, and Father God, I decree and declare over Ian and Dana right now an ability to focus and be aware of the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Father God, give them supernatural focus. 
for this next three days, Lord God, that they would see it, they would lay hold of it, and they would pull it into their lives, and they would possess this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. I give God a hand clap. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When the Bible says in Deuteronomy 8.18, God gave, promised our forefathers, as it is this day, that he gave you the power to obtain wealth. There, there is every day, the whole earth is full of his glory. The, the problem is we don't have the knowledge of the fullness of the glory. And what, what happens is every day, Tom, the goodness of the Lord is, is parading in front of us. The, the glory of God is all around us, but, we, but he wants to show you his goodness. And his goodness is parading in front of you, but you've got to do something. You've got to be aware of it, and you've got to lay hold of it. The Bible says that Jesus walked down from the mountain and he walked out onto the stormy sea. And the Bible says in one of the gospels that he was, he was about to walk on by. And then Peter cried out, your voice really matters. Your declaration really matters. What you say really matters. There's victory in your voice, and everything is voice activated. When you see the goodness of the Lord, you need to call it in, Adam. When you, when you see God presenting something to you, you need to say, that's mine. I pull it in right now. I receive the blessing of the Lord. you got to lambano it. you got to lay hold of it. Acts chapter 1, verse 8, it says, you shall receive power. You shall receive power. You shall receive power. Power. That word receive is lumbano. The Greek word lumbano, which means to lay hold of. We think it's inactive. Oh, God knows where I am. And if he wants to bless me, he knows my address. He knows my heart. He wants to bless you, but you are the gatekeeper. Say, I'm the gatekeeper. Say, I am am. the principality principality. and power of light light. in my sphere of influence. influence. You're the gatekeeper. You're the one that stands at the gate. You're the one that allows things into your life, and you are the one that keeps things out of your life. Amen? Amen. Joshua chapter 1, verse 2. Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise, go over the Jordan, you and all this people, to a land which I am giving to them, the children of Israel. Verse 6, it says, be strong and of good courage. In verse 7, it says, only be strong and very courageous. And then verse 9, it says, have, have I not commanded you, be strong and of good courage. Be strong is the Hebrew word kazak. When David was being really tested, just before, three days before he was about to become king. Three days before he's about to be crowned as the king of Judah. All hell breaks loose. The the Amalekites burned down his home village, their houses and everything. The Amalekites steal the wives and the children and they take them down to another stronghold. And his 600 men who he rescued began to speak about stoning him. He rescued these. He trained these people. He, he laid down his life for these people. He gave them a, a, a living. He gave them a purpose. He, he did everything for them. But yet they, at a moment of extreme oppression, they turned on the hand that was feeding them. You know what David did? The Bible says he turned aside and he kazaked himself. He strengthened himself. The same thing. That I'm telling you in Joshua, Joshua chapter 1, 9, be strong and of good courage. 
Strengthen yourself. You've got to know in this season how to strengthen yourself in the Lord. And that is your perspectives. Your perspectives. How do you see things? How you see things really matters because your perspective on every given situation creates your perception in this world. Say my perspective is creating my perceptions. Your reality is what you, your perceptions. You live out of how you see things. Scripture that I'm enamored with in this season, yet another one. First John chapter one. What, what the disciples heard, saw, and handled the word of life. We have a huge part in the kingdom of God and in the establishment of the kingdom of God. What we hear causes us to be able to see, which causes us to be able to manifest so we can handle the things of God. He wants to bring fresh things into your life, but we got to come out of the past and understand as we step into the new day, we're going to need strength and courage. I, it's not going to be a walk in the park, but it's going to be easy. But you got to stay yoked up with him. You're going to be the answer and the solution to your spheres of influence. He's developing. Yes, amen. That's the, way, that's the proper response right there. How are you preparing your heart for this season? I want to say to you with all my heart, fall in love with God. Fall in love with your Savior. Get your first love. Stir up the, the Holy Ghost. Romans 5.5 5 says, Hope no longer disappoints me because God has poured out his love into my heart by the Holy Spirit who he has given to me. So I have the love of the Father. My mind just needs to receive it. People are lying to you, okay? You don't have to move from your head to your heart, okay? It's, that's just not true. You have to move revelation from your spirit into your soul. It's really reverse of what a lot of people have been saying over the last 20 years. It, oh, I just got to move it from my head to my eye. I, I, I think about it. I kind of... No. It's the other way around. Because the... The beautiful thing about Christianity is this. Unlike any other religion around the world. You get everything at the beginning. Absolutely everything at the beginning. And then there's a, an unveiling and a revealing and a growing into the thing and into the person you have always been. I am, I am a spirit. I live in a body, and I possess a soul. I am not the sum total of my education, experiences, or culture. I'm a spirit, not a feeling. I'm a spirit, not an emotion. I live in a body. My senses and, and all these things that my, my, body, my, my beautiful, amazing, uh, fearfully and wonderfully made body that God has given to me, that's not who I am. That's something I live in. So a sickness or a disease that is attacking your body is not your identification. I don't live in that. I don't live from that identity. I live from the fact that I am an e eternal son or daughter of God. I am an eternal being. When did I become an eternal being? When I was procreated. When I was created 
recreated in Christ Jesus. I was created because first the physical, I had to come here in, in, in order so that I can be recreated in Christ Jesus. When I accepted Jesus Christ as my eternal savior, I received eternal life. At that moment of my conversion, I got everything because I got God himself. Got it all. Every other religion, you got to earn your way to the next level. You have to become enlightened. No, you are already everything. Now you need to train your mind. Say reformation. And transformation equals restoration of all things. Your spirit got reformed at your new birth. Say, I am the upgrade. I'm upgraded because I became one with the creator of the universe. That's blaspheme, Barry. No, that's the word of God. Thank you, Tom. First John, first John 4, 17 says, as he is, so am I. When? 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 It's not when you get to heaven that you get to have all the good stuff. I'm going to have to tell you to go to my website and get the word for the 2024 season. But I'm, I'm going to skim through it a bit. But I, I, I just, here, let me just start here. Yesterday, I was writing down some thoughts. And, and, I, and I say, yesterday, I was writing this down. This morning, I woke up and I had somewhat of a, an epiphany of the times and the seasons that we are currently in right now, okay? We are moving out of the institutionalization of councils and coalitions and we're moving into a family. That may not be revelation to you, but I wanna tell you, I'm, I'm a part of coalitions and I'm a part of councils. And, and they're just, there's no cohesiveness to it. There's, there's nothing holding them together in this season because the Lord says, I am shifting and changing things into a family model with mothers and fathers and sons and daughters. Yeah. That you're going to see heads of states and heads of ministries become more like a mother and a father or parents than you're going to be a leader of distinction. Yes. Say it's all about the family. Everything we do must be according to the family design that God put and instituted in the Garden of Eden Eden, when he created a man and a woman. Everything is coming against that template. Because it is the eternal template. And we don't need to speak every, against everything that is against that template. But we do have to be loud and proud about the fact that God gave us a template. And it's the family of God. Amen. A mother and a father procreating. Go make, come on, go into all the world. Go. How do you make a disciple? They're birthed. By a mother and a father that care for people. In Mohawk, it's called Ungwe Hungwe, the people forever. Say Ungwe Hungwe. Oh, you guys are excellent Mohawks. The people forever or the forever people. Ministry is not about the mandate. Uh, am I okay? Say, ministry is not about the mandate. Ministry is about people. Ministry is not about the mission. The mission is people. 
We are moving from councils and coalitions and we're moving into a family of God. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, we are, we are moving from times of death into seasons of life. I thought I'd get a better amen there. I'll try that again. We are moving from times of death and into seasons of life. There will be There will always be a dying to self. There will always be a a dying to agendas. There will always be a dying to selfishness. That's just a normal thing. But the weight of it is not on the death of this of something or the leaving or the getting rid of something that we've been under for the last four years in a significant fashion we've been dying to self we're dying to agendas been dying to to our past we've been dying to all the different things that are trying to take us out and it has been a beautiful death but we're moving from times of dying into seasons of living We're, what we are moving out of is the emphasis of the things that we are getting rid of. And then secondly, we are moving into seasons of life. We are moving into a des- our design places. Say, I'm moving into my design places. We are in a season of acquisition. So we're not, we're, we're not trying to get rid of stuff in this season. You should have already did that. And I wanna, we're going to give you an opportunity at the last day of 2023 to get rid of some strongholds, to get rid of some past problems, to get rid of some things that have been holding you down and holding you back, get rid of some foxes that have been nipping at your vine and soaking up your anointing and the things that have been eating the fruitfulness of your life and get ready because 2024 will be one heaven of a ride if you are in time, on time, in the right place with the right people doing the right things, be out of your obedience and your up to the Savior, it shall be a glorious day. We are moving into our promised lands. I told Tammy I could I could just throw all my notes away and I could just preach Joshua chapter 3. How we're moving into our promised lands. We are about to move in everything that was coming against you over the last four years was setting you up for your get up. Your setback is a set up so you can get up, so you can go up, so you can be filled up, so that you can have the encounters with God. Every person, come on January 6th. Everybody, come with expectancy of nothing more but encountering your God and your Savior. Everything is in an encounter. Your setback is your setup for you so you can get up, so you can go up, so you can be filled up, so that you can come back down and reign in authority with the Lord Jesus Christ. This is a season of acquisition. We're not trying to get rid of things, but we're going to do that today. Can you hear me? Yes. We're not, we need to just dot the last I and cross the last T. You got to get ready because God wants to bless you far beyond anything you could ever ask or think. Why? Because he loves everybody. And he, he loves everybody and he wants to use you a flawed vessel. The great, greatest testimony to that is called Barry Miracle. He takes the, the foolishness of the world and he confounds the wise. Ah. We're moving into our promised lands. We will be taking our places at the tops of our spheres of influence. God is about to shift you into the place what he always designed you to be in. 
This is the season that he's moving the chess pieces around. This is the season that he is playing according to his rules and his laws and his resurrection and his uh, all of the things that, that he has designed. He's playing by his rules, which are, there are none. Are you talking about anarchy? No. He is not guided by time nor space. He lives outside of time. Time is a created thing. And when you are in God and in time, in your obedience, you operate beyond time and beyond space. That's why he could walk through walls. That's why he could walk on the water. But I'm telling you, because there's enough gatekeepers that are... That are positioned and being positioned in this season of life because that is happening by this June 24th. Why June 24th? I don't know. He just said it. (laughs) And by this June 24th, there shall be a shift at an apex moment as we begin to unlock the mysteries of heaven and food Shortages will be solved. Energy things, energy situations around the world will be solved. There will be a great and mighty day of the Lord. He is not going to be taken out by a defeated devil. He's the author and the finisher of my faith. Jamie, he didn't bring us this far just to bring us this far. He's about to propel us into our places to be the proper gatekeeper that he's always designed us to be. So I'm taking my promised lands back. Come on, it's time to take over. Say it's time to take over, not take off. It's time to take dominion. Once again, we're not having dominion over people. We're having dominion over systems and over devils and demons and perverted poverty. Poverty is one of the grossest things. Every perverted thing dwells in poverty. We're going to crush poverty, Tom. You know why? Because he crushed poverty. But we're going to bring it forth from the manifestation and we're going to actually handle. Maybe said of Desert Stream, they heard, they saw, and they handled the word of life. You can smile. Thank you. This is a good word. But you still have to be strong and be very strong. And be of good courage. Because there is darkness on the earth. And there is deep darkness on the people. But that is not our definition. And we don't bow to that. Because the glory of God on the inside of you. That wants to come on the outside of you. Is far greater than any evil of any day. The kingdom of God is on the inside of you, desperately waiting to come out of you. You've got to lay hold of the promises. And you have to manifest the promises. The promises of God are yes and amen to them that believe. Say, I am an anointed believer. Time to take over not take off this season we are learning how to in our places and learning how to be in our places and operate in authority and display his glorious power so in this season as we are entering into 2024 we are actually in varying degrees walking into a new now age. 
Ladies and gentlemen, you are leaving your past behind. You're leaving the last season. There has been a, a, a portal opened up into the realms of the spirit that are available that will bring the blessings of the Lord into every area and situation of your life. Say, I must be aware. It's a war of awareness, ladies and gentlemen. What are you aware of? Are you more aware of what you're going through? Or are you more aware of the promises of God? Amen. We will be being caught up to speed as we receive greater revelations of the goodness of the Lord. We will be caught up to speed as we see properly. We will be caught up to speed as we are caught up into the presence of uncreated light. We will not just amazingly operate at the speed of light, which is so crazy. But we will operate above time and space. We will actually begin to cooperate with time and space as we co-create with God his preferred world. Miracles happen as we move, as the song goes. But what happens when somebody is healed is just the healing process in their molecular structure has been sped up. When you have a thorn in your hand and you leave it there, it gets infected. But once you remove the obstacle, your, the healing can come. But sometimes the deterioration of a, a cut or a wound or something that is causing a, a disease in your body is causing you to not be able to heal as fast as the deterioration of your body. Are you following me? And that's when some people die because of a trauma or they die because of a, a, a sickness or a disease. But when the kingdom of God comes and you receive a healing, a healing is sped up. You have, what are you doing? You're taking authority over time and space. You have the power and authority to take authority over time and space and you will bring Healing after healing. A miracle of God will operate like this, but a healing takes a process. But sometimes the healing happens really, really quickly. Why? Because you release the kingdom of God into the situation. you got to remove the obstacle, whatever the thorn is, whatever the sickness is, whatever the infirmity is, and then you begin to decree and declare the kingdom of God over the situation, and all of a sudden, Somebody is supernaturally healed because the speeding up. The same spirit that raised Christ from the dead, if that same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in your mortal body, that same spirit shall also quicken your mortal body. Say, my body is being quickened by the eternal life of God that lives and abides in me. You're going to hear more preaching on supernatural living than ever before. You're also going to hear things about Ionis Zoe, eternal life or immortality, where the regeneration, I'm stretching you today, but you need to know this. There is a regeneration of yourself if you have an awareness of the life-giving force that it begins to penetrate and you begin to live in the midst of the present and begins to regenerate your body. How many people would love to live to 120 and be full of strength and your eyes not wean? Well, that's your minimum. That was actually a curse. Because... Your liver, you cut out your two-thirds of your liver, it grows back. Your skin grows back. 
We were designed to live forever. We have eternal life and we need to press in that God gets everything that he so painfully paid for. He renews our strength, Tom. If, if you wait on him, and what is wait is not s- casually sitting back in your lazy boy saying, God knows where I am. No, it's actively setting up a trap. In the midst of the waiting, you are, you are being bound to the Lord. In the midst of your waiting, you are becoming one with him. And when you become one with him, there's no death, there's no disease, there's no stronghold, there's no principality, there's no power of darkness. When you are bound together with him, you're bound together with eternal life. Amen. Essentially, I believe in this season, we are moving out of a lot of our past paradigms. And we're moving out of the season of death and the season of dying into a very, very hopeful future that we will co-create with God if we're not afraid. Can I say, be strong. Be of good courage. For your God is with you. You don't feel him. Well, you need to spend time with him. I'm I'm not understanding what you're saying. Just spend time in the word. Ask God to show you. You don't have to be defeated. You have the victor on the inside of you, the one that won the total victory, the one that purchased your victory for you. He's the conqueror, and you're the more than conqueror. He wrote the check with his blood, and all you have to do is fill it in. He signed it. He paid everything. And this is our season to take back everything. Could you go to the kids? And there's nobody in the kids' ministry. So I'm not going to dismiss you. Put the bars on the doors. Just kidding. That just got got really weird. Uh, I'm just kidding. People online are saying, wow, I'm glad we didn't go to church today. We bless you guys. There's no bars going on any doors. But I just want us to spend a few moments and just reflect on a few things that God may want to get you ready. You might be some things that you need to get ready of. When I was, I was in here, my daughter and I were in here praying last night. And I call forth the spirit of reconciliation to come into the room. Would you just stand with me this morning? Can you say, I receive the spirit of reconciliation? Say, I rebuke shame, condemnation. So I'm free. The grace of God is here this morning. The mercy of God is here this morning. We're about to step into some really difficult dark moments but they don't have to affect you emotionally physically or financially and especially spiritually none of these things are designed to define you delay you or deny you what he is with intentionality placing you into is on purpose because he knows what he put on the inside of you. You are the answer or he never would have put you in that storm. So many things. We're trying to escape our problems. He doesn't want you to escape. He wants you to dominate. 
He doesn't want you to take off. He wants you to take over. Once again, with righteousness, peace, and joy, faith, hope, and love, grace, and truth. But there are things in your life that you've, even over this season, and you, you said, ah, I'll get better. I blew it, but I'm going to get better. You're not going to win that way. He's already forgiven you. You just have to receive it. Say, Father, I blew it. But I thank you, Dad, that you said in 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and purify us from all, right, on all unrighteousness. Say, I got to receive it. Say, I am a generous receiver of the goodness of the Lord. You can't give anything unless you first receive something. And I, want, I got news for you. Even though you don't feel it, even though you feel far from it, that's a lie. You're as close as the mention of his name. He's the God of hope. Mike, he's the, I, I, Mike, I just bless you with an overwhelming spirit of hope. As you're in the community in this next season, Mike, you're going to be a beacon of light and a symbol of hope. They're going to smell the Savior as hope rises and is seen on you. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Though there be darkness on the earth and deep darkness on the people, my glory, which is my goodness and all my power. The goodness of the Lord will be seen on you. You're going to be the answer. You're going to be the solution. But we just need to take a few minutes. And I just, with every head bowed and every eye closed, I just want to ask a question. Would you like to receive the light of the world and become one with eternal life today? If that's you, can you just lift your hands this morning? Thank you, 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 thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ooh, hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Pastor uh, Mark, you can come here for a second. Okay, you could just put your hands down if you like. If you've raised your hand, and if this is a, a first time that you've asked God to enter your life, I want you to come and Introduce yourself to Pastor Mark. He's the pastor of our house. S sits in the office of a pastor. His heart is as big as he is. That's pretty big. It's more than three times. He, he would love to give you a Bible and pray with you. But if you just rededicated your life and you just said, I want to become one with the creator of the universe. I want to become one with the one that gave his life me and you've kind of found yourself in positions where you've compromised a lot we've slipped up that's not your identity today I plead the blood of Jesus Christ against every vain imagination that's trying to make you think you are your failure I take authority over it now. I plead the blood of Jesus Christ against it, and I command it to come down. And can we all just pray this prayer all together? Say, Father God, I decree and declare this day, Jesus is my Savior. Jesus is the Lord of my life. 
today, I plead the blood of Jesus Christ. I plead the blood and body sacrifice of Jesus Christ as my only legal right. Jesus is my door. I walk through the abundant entrance way into all of his goodness. As I decree and declare and call Holy Spirit, Lord of my life. Holy Spirit, come into my life. I am making Jesus Lord and because Jesus is Lord in my life, Holy Spirit, you have become one with me. I receive you now in Jesus' name. If you prayed that prayer, if you raised your hand on that couch where you're driving down the road and it's several days down the road, please get in contact with us at Desert Stream. 613 968 5348. I was thought I was getting I was close. 613-968-5348. If somebody doesn't answer the phone, please leave a message. And we would love to get a Bible to you, get some materials to you, buy you a steak dinner. Pastor Kevin says he's gonna do it himself. <laughs> Maybe not the last one, but try. <laughs> now if I just want to make available, if you want to come forward and you just need a couple of people, some elders and myself and Pastor Kevin and other pastors here would be would love to pray with you.